So this is my Electron 4060 MK2. I had it for a couple of weeks now. I'd just like to give you my thoughts on this little gadget here that I got. Very interesting organic sound it has. More like an 8-bit chip tune video game type of sound. If you're looking for that analog, lush, soundscaping uh, type of sound, this is not for you. This is more experimental. Kind of like adding to the mix from what you already have, like maybe a Castle Basel, Breadboard Sequencer, and the Nano Synth, as you see here. Uh, so it's kind of an experimental little box. You can hook it up to audio, to a speaker, or you can hook it up to your modular gear. And it can do some interesting uh, CV gate sequencing. So you have your little oscillator section here. Then you have your clock divider which you can uh, pass between uh, these terminals and create some uh, very unique organic sounds and then you got your reset section here in the yellow and then the uh, power grid takes a 9 volt battery and uh, it does create some really interesting sounds using components like capacitors, resistors and you can just use straight wires if you want I like to use the lights because it kind of blinks with the sequence You can output four at the same time, whether it's four audios or maybe two audios and, you know, CV out to your modular gear. So uh, we'll start off with a very basic, basic patch, just using the patch cable, just to show you what it initially sounds like uh, using an audio out. So this is the output right here. You got your uh, tip, ring, and sleeve section. And of course, the 3.5 millimeter corresponds to the section here. So without doing any patching with the components if I just want to use one of the patch cables from the divider section that's what it would sound like and then you got your current it's sort of like a frequency knob and with the clock divider section I can go and get different divisions So you get the idea. So let's leave it in the uh, first one. And now let's try and patch one of the components and see what type of organic sounds we can get from that. So let's patch one of these uh, LEDs into one of the um, oscillator sections. See what it does right away? It kind of modulates the sound. All right, let's try something else. Let's try another LED. This is where you gotta start being a little bit more careful patching the big ones, <laughs> the big capacitors. Let's try it on a reset, see what happens. Okay, let's make it more interesting. Let's take a LFO or I got my breadboard sequencer uh, controlling the nano synth. So let's take the output from the gate out from the nano synth and plug it into the reset into the uh, 4060 and see what kind of effects we get. <laughs> 
So let's turn the volume up on the nano synth. Okay, nothing's happening, so sometimes when nothing happens, you start unplugging stuff. Okay, so it's in sync now. Don't know how, and sometimes you won't know until you just start experimenting. You see, the, the higher the pitch, it still stays in sync. This is my eight step sequencer I built. Using components and everything on a, a breadboard. So right now I got pretty much like an eight bit type of sound coming out of all three. I got the Castle Basil in action now. So right now I just got the Electron. Let me just make sure I'm pronouncing this right. Yeah, Electron 4060 and the Castle Basil. I just got those two in action right now. Castle Basil, I got kind of like a white noise type of sound. Very percussive coming out right now. That's an interesting sound. That was pretty cool. I like the organic sounds that come out of this thing. Um, what's really interesting is this section over here. Um, probably the reason why is because, let me see if the manual can explain it better than I can. It talks about the power section here and how it creates a very unique, here it is. What makes the 4060 unique is the interesting way the current is being outputted from the um, power section. When the current is not adequate, the efforts made by the chip oscillating and dividing start to show fluctuation as you add components to it. it makes it sound like the battery is going dead or stronger. So the device uh, habits are very, very unique in this section compared to over here. So you could do a lot with this section. I can't really explain why. I mean, it has a ground. And then you get the reset, so I don't know why it would behave a little bit differently, but I guess in its own unique way, I, I guess <laughs> once you start patching components and integrating them between the divider section and the oscillator, yeah, I can see how it can really get crazy. And then especially go into other modular gear, which we will do right now. So let's connect this to my modular gear, especially the, um, the Erica Synth Pico voice. I want to see how that sounds with the Pico voice. <laughs>
Thanks for watching, guys. I definitely would recommend it. Um, I got it on Reverb.com, and all depends on the sale that's going on. You can get it for about $110. I think the highest I've ever seen them was like $129. So uh, it's definitely cool to add to your modular gear, without a doubt. If you got a Castle Basil or even a Nano Synth, which is pretty rare nowadays that people have these, and you know you got your other little gadgets here, this this is perfect. Making music by itself, yeah, I definitely wouldn't recommend it. But if you're a sci-fi guy like me, a geeky nerdy type of guy who loves those 8-bit chipboard sounds, you know, then this is definitely the way to go. Alright, again, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in my next upload.